Hey guys, this is BuilderDude35, and this week's tutorial is going to teach you how to calculate the sloppiness of a certain wheel size on an EV3 large motor. So this week's video is going to be an expansion of a previous video that I had made, which is part 2 of what are the best wheels for an FLO or WRO robot. And in that video I had claimed that taller wheels are going to make the motors more sloppier by multiplying the backlash, which is true, but now I want to teach you how to quantify that or to put a number behind that. And how we're going to do that is we're going to use a metric that I'm calling slop distance. And yes, slop distance is a term that I just invented just now. If you don't like it, deal with it. So anyway, slop distance, what it is, is it's the distance that a robot can roll on its wheels before it starts to engage the motor core. So we see the backlash here, which is the sloppiness of the motor, and its slop distance is going to measure this distance, how far the robot rolls in millimeters. Now slop distance is like golf. The lower the score, the better. And a slop distance of zero millimeters means it's absolutely perfect, and the motor has no backlash whatsoever, so there's nothing for the wheel to multiply. And the higher the slop distance, the sloppier the motor becomes, the less uh, reliable it is. So, without further ado, I'm going to be walking you through the steps of calculating slop distance. The first order of business is going to be to calculate the amount of degrees of backlash that are in these motors, and this will in turn allow us to calculate the backlash distance, or slop distance as I'm calling it, at the wheel. So what you'll need is a protractor and the motor with a needle on it so you can measure how many degrees it is. So you're going to set your motor down on the protractor and you're going to rotate it to the left, or uh, counterclockwise, um, to the 90, and 90 is going to be our zero mark for this. And then what you're going to do is gently rotate it to the right until you feel it right up against the, the motor again. And this is, this is not going to be actually moving the motor core inside. This is just the distance that the gears move through their backlash. So when what you do is you rotate it, and we see that we have nine degrees of backlash here. So these motors are actually pretty sloppy. Now this next step is where all the math comes in. What you're going to need is a calculator, and you're also going to know the diameter of all of your wheels. But uh, most Lego wheels have their diameters printed on the sidewall of the tire, and this is in millimeters. Now here's the math equation that we're going to use to find the slop distance of these wheels. First, you're going to multiply the wheel diameter in millimeters by pi. And once you get that, you're going to divide that by 360 divided by the backlash degrees, which is 9 degrees. Or we could just simplify it, where we have the wheel diameter times pi divided by 40, as shown here. So first up, we're going to calculate the slob distance for these really small wheels. They have a diameter of 43.2 millimeters we're going to multiply that by pi. Now it's important that you put this first part in parentheses here because we want the calculator to execute this first and get an answer and then divide it by 40. So now we're going to hit divide by 40 and then when you hit enter you should get uh, a number like this and now we have 3.4 millimeters as the slop distance for these small wheels. So the next wheel is these medium sized wheels which are a very popular choice for FLL robots. They have a diameter of 56 millimeters. Now let's multiply this by pi and then divide it by 40. And the slop distance for these medium wheels is 4.4 mill millimeters, exactly one millimeter more than these small wheels. The next wheels that we're going to calculate the slop distance for is these slightly larger race car wheels, which are similar to the last wheels we measured, but a little bit bigger. So here's the size comparison. Now their diameter is quoted at 68.8 millimeters. So multiply that by pi and then divide by 40. And we see they have 5.4 millimeters of slop distance, which is one millimeter more than this wheel, and in turn, two millimeters more than these wheels. Lastly, we have these motorcycle wheels, which are significantly larger than the last largest wheel that we measured. Now these motorcycle wheels don't have any diameter printed on their sidewall. But I know that they're the same size as the Unimog wheels, which have a diameter of 94.3 millimeters. Uh, so we're going to use that in our calculation. And then once we calculate, it comes out to be 7.4 millimeters of slop distance, which is significantly more than any of the other wheels. Now here are the results for the four wheels that we measured. 
When put on an EV3 large motor, these small wheels will have 3.4 millimeters of slop travel. These will have 4.4 millimeters. These large race car wheels will have 5.4 millimeters. And these large motorcycle wheels are by far the sloppiest at 7.4 millimeters. So we see as we go larger in size, the slop distance will increase. Now since this is a graphing calculator, I have the luxury of finding the regression of all of these wheels. What I have is I've done for my x value, I've entered the diameter of all of these wheels. And in the y value, I have the resulting slop distance. So basically, it's the effect of the diameter of the wheels on the slop distance. And when we go and we look at the linear regression, we find that the uh, correlation coefficient is 0.9999 blah 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 almost close to 1. This number is so close to 1 in fact that we can conclude that this is a perfect linear positive relationship. Thanks for watching my video this week. I hope it advanced your understanding of motors and backlash and all that icky stuff like that. And I'll see you at the next video. Bye.